It went straight in the live, so I didn't even get to uh, prep us anything. I guess I don't need to. Oh, we in live now. Okay. Yeah, we live. <laughs> you good? Yeah, I'm good, man. What's up with it, man? All right, man. All right. Well, you know, it's this is how these things go, right? There's always going to be issues when you're trying new technology. Right. So let, let me go and jump it off. All right. So this is my first attempt at uh, doing the live stream here. And um, I have the utmost uh, honor to have uh, Rel from We Talk Mavs join here on this stream. Uh, we're going to talk about Max Akiba's but injury. But before we get there, Rel, if you could, um, I mean, I've been on your channel plenty of times. So people know me uh, when, when I do go on your channel. But this is your first time being introduced to you know, my, my little following, and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, man, and uh, let us know a little bit more about yourself. Well, like you said, my name is Israel. I am one half of the We Talk Mavs Crew on Glow Mavs YouTube channel. Uh, shout out to King. Uh, probably yes, sir. Be on tonight, but I should have told him. But yeah, uh, we. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out if we could do multiple, more than one, but I think it's just one or two people, that's it. But we'll see. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. Uh, but no, we we cover the Mavs like uh, TGK just said. We just anything Mavs, man. We cover it on on our channel. So uh, if you guys follow TGK, you guys can also follow us too, man. On uh, Glow Mav YouTube channel, we talk Mavs. Yes, sir. All right. So today, um, I just really wanted to get on here for a little bit and um, and try this stuff out, man. Because I don't, I I see how it could be a little nerve wracking. Because for me, I, I, my jitters are crazy right now. So. Shout out to you, man. You you a pro at this, so yeah, I'm pretty sure. But uh, I'm thankful to have you on, man. Um, all right, so the news comes out that uh, Max Kleber will be out indefinitely. Apparently, he sustained a right hamstring tear, man. Um, and they're saying he might be out six to eight weeks. Now, with that being said, that means that's going to put on uh, more pressure on Dwight Powell. We're hoping uh, Jason Kidd is not hating on Christian Wood anymore and probably plays him more, have to play him more. But when you heard the injury, what was your, your immediate reaction to it uh, as it pertains to the Dallas Mavericks moving forward? Well, a couple of things. Because well, for, for first, let me start with this. The fact that Maxi Kleber, a guy that will probably be at the, the end of a bench for any other good team, is the piece that we are going to die now without having. That tells you a lot right there, man. Um, yep. Unfortunately, this is going to hurt the team. We saw it here against the, the Cavaliers. Uh, yep. His inside, what inside presence he does give us, is going to be lacking. So. <laughs> Now we're gonna probably be asking a little bit more from uh <sighs> JaVel McGee. <laughs> which mm -hmm. is gonna be crazy. Um well, it's either that or we're gonna probably end up having to make some kind of a move. Now now the move is not gonna be made to enhance the team, it's gonna be made out of desperation. So there's that part. Um my, my, like I said, my first reaction was like it was more like an annoyance than anything mm -hmm. else. It's like, ah, here we go. Um, and like I said, unfortunately, it's going to affect this team because uh, what Massey Massey does something that's a, that's a little bit more effective than our other bigs, just to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, I totally agree uh, with you in that, that sense. It's, um, I, I have a different look at it, uh, a, a slight different look. Uh, the way I look at it is, you remember I, uh, I dropped that video about how they should distribute minutes and how yeah. how Kid has been kind of using him. Yeah. And he's giving him like starter minutes, and he's always putting him in there in like the most pressure times, right? He's always has to like clo a closing lineup, and I, I don't know how old he is anymore. Do you know how old he is, right off the top of your head? Like, let me see. Uh, so imagine probably like yeah, he's thirty, thirty years old. I thought to give him thirty one, but you okay? That's that's crazy. He started, man, still young, but is, is he has been declining from a from a health standpoint, right? Being yes. being able to stay healthy on on the court. Um, but the thing is, like, kid using him so much, averaging twenty five minutes a game, but on the big games is always like thirty minutes, thirty two minutes, whatever the case may be. 
you're overusing that man for what he's supposed to be. He's supposed yeah. to be a role player, man. And and if anything, uh, that's why I suggest like 20 minutes or less, like because that way you get to maximize what you got from him, and you kind of get to save him in a way with not playing him so many minutes. And I do think with with the way Kid has been using him and just relying on him so much is what really been already beating him down the beginning of the season. And it's like you're playing him playoff minutes or giving him like a playoff. Um, type of role so he's big on 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 finishing the games and big on just load up and having to guard the bigger players and having to protect your team having to protect wood so i think the injury is bad obviously um it's just it's it's hard to see what positives can come from it because we don't even know if kids are even going to allow christian wood to get more than 23 24 minutes listen man i do, do you think? Here's the next question. Do you think with this injury, uh, Christian Wood gets over 28 minutes a game? You're not going to have a choice. Mm. Listen, it's either you get him over 28 <laughs> minutes or you're going to have to put in to Bill McGee. Which one do you want? You know what I'm saying? So mm. you're going to have to you're gonna have to do it, TGK. I mean, yeah. you have no choice now. And you kind of backed yourself into this corner. You know what I'm saying? Um, listen, can I, can I just vent just a little bit about this whole yes, thing? Yes, please. Please Listen, go ahead, y'all. Who I, I know, y'all. I see the I see the uh, the guys on the screen here. A lot of these guys are, are part of our channel. Y'all, y'all know my stance on this. Y'all know King's stance on this. I remember talking about this a few months ago when they extended Maxi Cleveland, right? Mm-hmm. And this was one of the reasons why we said, "Listen, why are you extending him right now? Let's wait." There, there was no reason to extend Maxi Cleveland. At the time, guess what? Like you just said, it's been it's this been showing that he's been declining over the last two or three years. It's been showing. It's like it's not there's nothing a guess or anything like that. This is something we've been mm-hmm. seeing before. He's been declining. So what makes you think that he was going to get better after you gave him that contract extension? So like, this right here is the peak of his injury uh, history right here. So it's just like now you got a guy who's on the other side of thirty, who is injury prone. That you have for an additional three years. That and how much? How much per year? How much per year? Eleven a year. God, I you had him nine. for one year, TJK. You had him for one year for yeah. nine mil. After this season, this little injury he has right now, that would have been out your off your books. That would have been out of your hair. You wouldn't have to worry about that no more. You want to yeah. heal up and all that? You could do that on another team. But now, guess what? You stuck with him for another three years. So now you have him for three more years, and now you have JaVel McGee for three more years. You see what I'm saying? So Jesus. It's a it's a lot of factors in with it's not just the fact that oh we're gonna miss him because of the defense. It's a lot of factors into this, man. That's why I'm just like I, I guess I was more upset with the fact that you're gonna have him for three more years, knowing this type of stuff happens. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like that's what I was mad about. I know a lot of people are like, oh, we mad. We're going to miss his defense. I'm mad because of that contract that we took. <laughs> That's what I was mad about. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? So, I, I, I mean, this is the Mavericks. So, I mean, this is the type of stuff we, we're used to. This is the type of stuff that, you know, we've seen them do over the last handful of years, and especially in the Luka era so far. It's like, they just make bad decisions across the board, man, and it's nothing new. So, like I said, my, my uh, uh, initial reaction, I should have said this at the beginning of the video, my initial reaction was I was I was mad because now we have a hurt guy for another three years, and if you got the Bill McGee for another three years, that's, that's, uh, but yeah, man, and, and, and you know these hamstring injuries they don't they're not easy to get over. Like and, they yeah they they, they say it's six, not easy to get over. Exactly, they say six to ten weeks. Nah, you could probably double that. No, yes, you could double yes. that. Uh, Twelve to twenty. Because those hamstrings are not going to get easy uh, to, to overcome. Uh, so here's the stats for, for this year. He played 22 games, started none of them, right? Um, 6.2 points, uh, or block, uh, one assist, one block, one assist per game, 3.5 rebounds per game as well. Shooting 78% from the free throw line. That's, that's pretty good. It's a pretty good improvement from the previous year. And then uh, 30, 36.9 from three. Um, and he was shooting fifty percent from the over overall overall floor. That's not bad. Right. The, the here's the thing, man. Like, so 
2017, 2018, 2019, he played in over 70 games. And then 2020, 2021, he couldn't crack 60. This year, not going to – probably not even going to crack 40, 30. Yeah. Um, Maybe you missed games already at the beginning of the season, so yeah. And, and and I was, I was okay if we extended him to three years, but I was not okay with the money. Um, I, I remember doing a video like in 2019 about like uh, the contracts. If you ever get a chance, go back to it. I, I got so deep into like the, the, the nuances of like, you know, contract construction and and you know how much these players should should be paid or whatever the case may be. Right. But I I would have, and again, whenever we talk about these players, I. Quick disclosure, I'm not talking about them personally. I'm just talking about what they yeah. bring to the table, how they play, and what that play deserves and pay, right? Yeah. And Max Akiba should not be making up $11 million for what he provides, man. He should, If anything, I was thinking less than five. Three years, 4.5 per year. I think that would have been more suitable to what he could give you. And and I know 11 and, and, and this is the thing. I know you on the show, you on uh, uh, one of our shows one time. You said that this, this the thing though. The issue that we're having right now is we don't have enough talent. That's 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 the that's the issue we're having. You know, we're already over the luxury tax, and you you're not. It's nothing to justify it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so you already being over the luxury tax, you lack the talent. Now you're uh, extending a guy that's not helping any of those. You know, any any of those are the same dog. You see what I'm saying? Not part of the future. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so when I like I said, this this franchise, this organization grows attached to these players, like a Maxi. Oh, he's a great guy, he's a great locker room guy. Okay. Untrapped. Like Kyle, great locker room guy, right? So you you extend these guys because you you love them. They just like a great like their presence. They're just wow, great guys. You're like, do you win championships off of great guys or do you win championship off of talent? You know what I'm saying? The one thing that right. you've been lacking over the last handful of years is you have not been getting talent. So instead of you trying to save that money to go get talent, you decide to extend the guy that's capped out. What what you see in Maxi Cleveland, that is it. It's not like you're going to go out here over the next, you know, couple years and start picking up handles and start looking like, you know, dead of shrimp with somebody out here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to happen, bro. Imagine Max Kleber with a with a uh oh sham god. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like he had her crossing chest up, like he had her looking like uh any any big you know the guy handles or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the thing is, like I said, I look, I'm it, nothing against Max Kleber as a person. He's like I said, right. great guy. But look, man, mm-hmm. you, see the, you see the shirt I got on? This is what I'm for. I'm right. for the team. Like I was a I was a fan before Dirk, I was a fan before Luca, I'll be a fan after him. You know what I'm saying? So my point I'm making is like, look, you can't grow too attached to these players. Your idea is to try to get better. Not to mm-hmm. just guys you love. Like, oh, I love this guy. What can that guy do? Oh, he can sing? Oh, well, I mean, does that help us on the court, though? Like, can we right. help us on the court? No, I want that guy because he can sing. Oh, well. Then we're not going to win anything. Then. You know what I mean? Right. It's showing right now. And now Maxi doesn't help us either way, contract or his player because he's hurt. So now you're stuck. Stuck like uh stuck like Chuck, man. And that's the tough part about it. I mean, I you saw the Cavs game. Yeah. I know you've been dealing oh, with a, what? a little hit. What's up? Yeah, I, I you know what's crazy about that? To uh, say what you uh, before you uh, start uh, on that. I've been sick, as everybody know. I just I'm just right, not getting over COVID. I laid in the bed watching the Cavs game, and I mm-hmm. cut it off at halftime. I didn't watch the rest. of – We're not doing a show, so I didn't have to watch the rest of the game, right? I couldn't right. help at halftime end up watching a movie or something, man. So anything that happened after halftime, the only the, I'll call everything up until Luca mugging uh, uh <laughs> Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban. We're gonna talk about that on the show, by the way. But yeah, no, I, I didn't, even, forward to I didn't it. watch the rest of the game, bro. I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here for that. I'm not here for that. But yeah, uh, yeah no, nah, you were saying uh, No, nah, um, so with with the game, right? Uh, pitiful, pitiful performance. I, I know yeah. both teams have slow pace. But at no point when you got a talent like Luca, it, and it's just, it's just a lot of this stuff this year has been inexcusable. It's been one of those uh, uh, season from hell, right? Like you, you came into the season with some kind of optimism because we did come into the season with a little bit of optimism. Like, damn, we got sides, we got potential here with Josh Green, right. we got uh, uh, you know, Dinwiddie, Christian Wood, 
And and we were on board for like a split second with Wood coming off the bench because it made sense in theory. And then you saw that it really didn't make sense anymore. And then it's like, all right, eventually we know in Kid is like, okay, he, he, he came into this season as like a really great coach. And we're like, all right, he tries something, he's going to switch it up. We're damn near into 30 games. And he's sticking with the same lineups, with the same lineups that Rick Carlisle would have stuck with. Yep. Yep. Right? Oh, go, go ahead. Sorry. No, go, no, go, no ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, y'all watch the show. Listen, this is why I know King was like, oh, you got to give him a chance. Don't give up on him yet. This is why I'm, 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 I got some trepidation with Jason Kidd, what you just said. Look, it should not have taken you 20 games to see that, hey, man. Reggie Bullock not hitting his shots. Oh, hey, man. Tim Hardaway is out here looking like trash can juice. Like, it, it shouldn't have taken you 20 games, man, to understand it. Oh, or oh, it shouldn't take you 20 games to say, you know what? We might need to give uh Christian Woods some starting minutes. Or it shouldn't have taken you 20 games to say, man, you know what? Let's go ahead and bring the rookie up. This dude is killing right now in the G League. You know, all these type of things like this, it should not take you 20 games, bro. 20 games could be too late. That could dictate 20 games could probably dictate. Where you are in the pecking order. That, that's when you everybody kind of finds out where they are as far as like mm-hmm. still moves and what you're working with and all that stuff. If you need to make a move, or you don't need to make a move or whatever. It's about that 20, 25, 30 game range. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has mm-hmm. an idea what they are. Why do you wait until then to make these moves when you see it now? Fix it now. So that way if you get to game 30, you're good to go. You know what I'm saying? And so now it's like Dallas has dug themselves so far in a hole, man, the way that, that they've been running things from the front office to the coaching staff to the play of the players to the point it's like, what is there to do? Like, what what can you do to make this team better, bro? Because, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I don't even have an answer. Like, I know, you know, I, I saw I saw y'all's video. Uh, shout out to DDP in uh, Dallas Prospects. Like, I, I saw y'all's video, y'all talking about that, trying to give ideas and all that stuff. And I'm just mm-hmm. sitting there like, y'all, hoping y'all had answers because I don't have any answers. I, I don't know. He <laughs> <laughs> talk about yeah. this all the time. I, I don't know. Because, you know, we, we can sit there and say what they should have did. But it's like now, like I said, you've dug yourself so far. It's like, what is there really to do now? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Because, look, y'all, everybody saw the video. Uh, no, sorry, not the video. But it was a video, too. Everybody saw it. Well, two two videos. The one with, uh, where Luca walked off the court after the Bucks game, he didn't shake mm-hmm. anybody's hand. He literally pouted, walked right to the. Uh, it, uh, the it, it it reminded me of when uh, uh, LeBron yeah, uh, le- walked when, off uh, on Cleveland. Yeah, I heard you say game. that. You yeah. said that. I said I didn't want I didn't want to hear you say that because it hurts to yeah. think that way. But I mean, and then at the same time, I was like, well, he's right. I was like, you, you're right. I mean, I, I can't argue that. I I, I can deny it. All I want, because I don't want to hear that. Like, oh, look, it's all, I don't know. It, it was just that. so similar to it, man. So similar. When you said that, I, I swear, when you said that, I heard you say that on the uh, on the show with D, uh, DDP and Dallas Prospects, I, I swear to you, that's what my mom went to. I, I, I played back in my head that play of LeBron taking that jersey off in the tunnel and went right to the to the locker room. Mm-hmm. Right to the last game as a Cavalier the first time. Um, Then, like I said, the second one, the him mugging Mark Cuban. Listen, man, I – uh, shout out to uh, Uncle Freezy, now, man, from uh, from their Knicks podcast. I said this on his. I was a guest on his show, and I said this to him on there. I said, "Man, look, it's just like you know, you playing basketball. Oh no, you know what? Don't say basketball. You work for a job, right? Mm-hmm. Say I got a project I got to turn in. It's like you and four other guys got to turn a project in. How would you feel if you're the only one working hard on the project? Mm. You see what I'm saying?" That's mm-hmm. what Luca's going through right now. Like, understand people like, oh, he shouldn't be pouting and this and that. Listen, I understand. That's that's cute to say that he should not be pouting. Human nature kicks in. Then he's like, look, mm-hmm. I'm frustrated, bro. Like, mm-hmm. like basically, when you feel like you're working and nobody is trying to help you, like I can understand. Like, that's why I'm, I'm sitting there like with him pouting and him mugging Mark Cuban walking by. I'm not mad at Luca. That's human. Yep. That's human nature. Eventually, you're yep. gonna be like, yo, I'm getting tired. And we said this months ago. He's like, yo, after a while, I'm getting tired of carrying it all on my back by myself. Can you help me? Yep. Nobody's trying to help me, man. And that's very stressful. Then, like yep. I said, on top of that, you see it yourself. And then on top of that, you have to hear about it. Mm-hmm. The national media is not, give, not uh, easing up on Luca at all, bro. So that's the that's a, another part that's hindering him. It's like you're getting hit from both sides. So after a while, you'll be like, yo, 
maybe they're right. Maybe I do need to go to L.A. or I need to go to, you know, Miami or whatever and, and, and win. Because I'm, I'm not getting it here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because Luka don't even have people that can dribble. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Dribbling. We're, we're, not, we're talking about the NBA, NBA man. We're talking that. about the NBA where, yeah. where there's only like 300 people make it, right? Um, with, yeah. with G League, is like 400 or something like that. How we get a whole team full of McKay dribble? <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? I, How, I, man? I, I remember I was talking to my wife about that one day. She thought I was just making it up. Like, oh, you didn't mean me. No, but listen, let me sit you down and watch. These people cannot draw the ball. Like, I'm, not, I'm not joking, man. And so and like, I, I, I it, said that on Uncle Freebie show, man. I'm like, bro, they can't, I'm not making this up. He, he know. He watched the game. He saw it before. Right, right, right. So yeah. I'm like, bro, you, they can't dribble. That, that's all we're asking you to do is dribble. Not play yeah. move, just dribble. You know what I'm saying? Can't mm-hmm. finish around a rim. I don't know how many times Dodo did Air ball to lay up or something. How many how many times Tim Hardaway taking it into the basket oh, and just can't get there? <laughs> Frank, you see the one Frank did yesterday in the first half of that uh Cleveland game? Blue oh, body bro. and shorthanded the layup. I said. Yeah, man, that that's uh that's not NBA level, bro. That's not at all. Like you you're not gonna be able to to what get another contract in the NBA if you can't make a wide open layup. Like that, that's just that's just fundamentals right there, man. But uh, that's Luka's a bad the thing. Involved, though, man. The what? Luca, Luca got to get his teammates involved, though. Remember that. <laughs> right. And, and and see that that's where we uh I'm I'm glad us as uh you know just to, you know part of being a part of the mass community like we're all calling people out for like these things that they say about Luca like when they just say outlandish things you could immediately tell that they ain't watching the game. Yeah. Especially with like the 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 main uh, media heads like the Will Bonds or Stephen A's, they're not watching the game. Same thing with uh, Perkins; they're not watching the games. They're just saying what they, you know, what the narrative is saying, you know. And then and that's why um, I forgot who it was like the uh, some Cowboys receiver was talking about is Jason Tatum the best player in the NBA. And um, I was like, look, there's a benefit to having Smart and Brown on your team, and it really highlights what you could do whenever you're not getting doubled. <laughs> you got ISO on LeBron all day at his age right now and, and you know, make him look make him look crazy in overtime. Right. But Please. if you oh, don't got a Brown on your team, you don't got a Smart on your team, <laughs> it's going to be LeBron and AD coming your way, and you're going to have to pass it to someone that can't shoot like Luka has to. And so there, there's a difference to the impact that one player can have because all I'm saying is we are, in, in the whole scheme of this thing, we are in – in a really, really tough situation. We're in a bad situation. I don't know what trades you even make that can make this team better because it's starting to feel, I, 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 and I don't know, maybe it's a defeatist mindset, but it's starting to feel like eventually Luka's going to get to the point where frustra- he's so frustrated and we're not going to have any kind of flexibility to make any moves that right. the only way to create flexibility and to, to improve our future is going to have to be to move Luka. Because what you're going to do, you're going to keep him and let him be uh, so frustrated. You know, that when we lost to the Bucks, that horrible play, right? You saw when he chucked that three? Mm-hmm. And you saw when he lost? He didn't know how to react. He just flailed his arms looking at the bench. That is, it's not like un like because Luca would just tear his jersey and be very, um, I guess, control his rage. But this time, he just couldn't even control it. He didn't, know, he didn't even know what he was doing. He was just upset. And looking to blame somebody, um, and I, I just it's, it's the level of incompetence for me. We got kid Mark Cuban, these two. They're, they're, I think here's a problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna let you say something real quick after this. The incompetent. That's what it is. There's a com- level of comfortability there, right? When you yeah. hire someone that you know, there's always gonna be like, oh, he'll give me some some rope. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But when you hire someone that got something to prove. And and they're like kind of tippy toeing around you because they you know they gotta protect their spot. You get in a way you get a better performance. You get someone that's hungrier. And I feel like Kid is very protected in his moves that he's doing. And I don't know why he protects Powell. I don't know why he's protecting Hardaway. But there's better players on the current roster <laughs> that you can start ahead of those guys and and make this season a lot more quote unquote digestible, right? Because right now it's it's not like ain't nobody trying to eat. This this overcooked steak because it's overcooked, right? Ain't no way, ain't no way. So, I don't know, man. How how do you how do you think we move from here? What do, what is one thing we could probably do? 
What is the positives out of this Max Kleba injury? Okay, listen. Let, let me let me touch on this first because you said about the Jason Tatum thing. I, I said this on the show after the Phoenix uh, win. I remember I, I said I said, look, man, they got to stop comparing these guys to Luca, man. That's that's one thing. It's like you just said. It is nice to have a guy, a, a guy that's averaging damn near thirty points himself. You got two guys. That's yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, Tatum's averaging thirty. And you got another guy who's averaging nearly thirty on that That's team. Crazy, man. Can you tell me the last time Luka had a, had a guy who averaged uh, nearly thirty? I don't even think he's had a net guy that can average nearly twenty. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure I was getting this correct. I'm sorry, you no, um, <laughs> But to touch on what you just said about what they, you know what, man? I, I said this, and I'm gonna stick with this. I think Jason Kidd is losing this team. Mm-hmm. Now, it. I also want to point out the fact I said this before too. This is this is a very quiet missing piece that nobody nobody talks about. This, the fact that Dallas is missing Eagle, they're missing him. Mm-hmm. Listen, Dallas last year was uh, either first or second. I think it was second behind Phoenix in clutch points last year, right? Mm-hmm. They were one of the best teams coming out of timeouts to execute plays. This year, what's one of their one of the weaknesses? They can't close out, and they don't execute plays out of timeouts. So it was it wasn't surprising when Luca was frustrated after that play in uh, Milwaukee after the Milwaukee game. What what was that, TGK? What was that? Now, if you wanted to get a decent play in, why didn't you call a timeout as soon as the ball came in uh, in bounds? You, you had like seven seconds left. Exactly. What, what do you think? This was the ball down the court, dribbled it a couple times, and then all of a sudden you stumbled. Said, Let yeah. me go ahead and call a timeout now. Then you got then you down to two point two. What is that, bro? That's mm-hmm. that's never a let me catch it. Or that's, that's a matter of fact, somebody catching the ball in bounds and having the time to throw it to one more person, and that's it. Right. But that one more person you throw it to better shoot the ball. So mm-hmm. I said this before. You you have Luca. And you know this team, other players aren't aren't can't create for themselves, can't dribble, can't do none of that. So if you have Luca, Reggie, Dodo, Maxi, and who else? Well, yeah, those hard away. Those four guys in there with Luca, who getting the ball? <laughs> who you want to take the last shot? Who you want? Exactly. Who you want to take the last shot? So when you want they, thirty-five footer step back from Luca, you want a wide open Bullock yeah. shot. You see what give, I'm me the, give me the thirty five. <laughs> exactly. So this is the thing. Bro. This is the point I'm making. So any other time, that's the kind of line of you have in with Luca. It's take Luca to be the guy to make the shot. If that's the case, everybody their mama knows who's going to take the last shot. So what they gonna do? I'm gonna quadruple team him. Facts. Right. So what he did in the Milwaukee game this is probably the first time I'll give him credit. He put uh, Christian Wood and Spencer Dinwiddie in. Now. No, y'all remember last year when Spencer didn't win, he made two clutch shots. He, matter of fact, not even just those two clutch shots. He made, he made clutch buckets down the stretch in other games, mm-hmm. too, right? Yep. Uh, Mark Fowler talked talk about the fact that this dude has one of the highest percentages in clutch of uh, time in the league right now, right? Mm-hmm. And, and Spencer did with it. Why has Spencer did with it been used in any of those situations uh, this season so far? You, you see what I'm saying? Like, this is this is coaching, okay? <laughs> This is coaching. This Man. is what I'm talking about when I talk about when I talk to King about this type of stuff. This is what I'm talking about. Like, right. I don't he wants to hold on to last year. I don't give him a chance. No, no, no. Listen, man. You are making millions of dollars. Millions. This is your job. This is all you do. And you sit and you 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 should know these guys. You are intimate with these guys every day. You practice. You are a development coach. So that means you're hands-on. That means you know what you're working with. Like I said, it shouldn't take you 20 games. It should not be hard. You know that Reggie Bullock is shooting one for affinity right now, and you want to put him in at crunch time, but you're going to go sit your second leading score in the, on the bench during crunch time. That shouldn't take you 20 games to know, man. That's common sense. Mm-hmm. Any, any other team in the league put their best offensive players in in crunch time except for the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, it doesn't make no sense, man, but to answer your question, like I said before, I don't know, man. Because like you said, what trade are you going to make right now that's going to help this team right now? But what? Like what? You know? 
Yeah, I, I saw a trade. I saw I saw a trade that was hilarious. It was on Twitter, oh, and uh, it was uh, it was Bullock, uh, Wood, Hardaway, Green, uh, three first round picks for Bradley Beal, and someone responded, "That is that is the utmost Mavericks type of trade ever." <laughs> Like, like you about to get a tw- twenty-one point player for all of that. Like it's 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 such a maverick thing to do. It, it was just someone like trying to get Bradley Beeler, but I, I don't. I really don't think there's anything you can do unless you're gonna be able to flip Wood for like a first and a young player. Uh, man, I man. don't know, man. Unless yeah. unless there's like some other team that hasn't been glued on to what we're doing here and they're willing to give us like a little, you know, little, <laughs> here you go. Like they always help right. out the Lakers, you know, when they attempted to give them uh <laughs> CP three, the Kobe uh, like that. Uh, uh, power to trade. Yeah. The CP three, CP three trade. Yeah, like yeah, why yeah. the Lakers always get the best trades. You know what I'm saying? Like they got AD. Well, that was a little bit. The table. Uh, eight, yeah. True, true, true. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and the Mavericks used to. Pick that though, bro. Gonna, go uh, this is gonna probably help you change your answer. I don't know if you saw um, the Hoop Collective. I think I want to say four days ago. They listen. Um, if Dallas is gonna do something, right? Whether it be this year or whatever, Dallas needs to make a move, and I'm talking about ASAP. Something that's gonna help this team get better. And this is why. So. Folks like uh, Tim McMahon, guys, you know who are, are locked in. Are, are a lot of people are talking, TGK. I heard about it. Talking. Yeah, they think that if Dallas has two, two years, years. yeah, mm-hmm. to get it to get this thing done, man. But like you were saying, well, go ahead. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, we'll we'll kind of wrap this up a little bit, and we'll get on to this last topic I wanted to talk about. But uh, you know, when I made the video about. Um, we, Jason Kidd needs to stop kidding around, or the Mavericks need to stop yeah. kidding around. It was a, a a pun on his name. Yeah, but it was because it feels like they're just kidding around. It's like, all right, let's just you know we'll figure it out. I I don't I don't for the life of me want them to to take any of this Luca performance, Luca ability, Luca greatness for granted. I think we all understand. Um, I think us, you know, now that we're not as 15 year olds watching Dirk as, as a, you know, a beastly God growing up, like, Oh, this is going to be forever, you know? And then now we've seen him leave and now we're, you know, we're a little bit older and we kind of understand how time happens. You know, Luca is 23 and it's great for anybody who's like a 13 year old. They're, they're like, Oh, I'm getting to grow up with Luca. But for us, we know that time is ticking. We ain't got the time. We don't. And so the fact that we, we feel that as I guess, you know, uh, more experienced mass fans, the fact that we feel that and it doesn't feel like the up, you know, front office feels it, the coaching staff feels it, the fact that they it seems like they don't feel that like this is okay. That's one of the more frustrating things. Oh, and, wow, yes, man. Yes. I'm like, just like there's no sense of urgency I, at all. It's like eh, at all. It's like, come on, man. And, and, and uh and, and to the next point, I know you don't watch the Cowboys anymore, but growing up my entire life. Since like 2000, 2000 when I, I, don't, I started watching the sports around 99, but became a big fan of all the Dallas teams around that time. Right. The, the Mavericks have always been the more successful, more well-ran organization in Dallas. And I never seen any of the Super Bowls or any, anything like that. So I always, always been able to put the Mavericks with, you know, a good franchise excellence. Right. Nice with the Cowboys with a circus, Jerry Jones, just want to be, you know, number one in the headlines. For the first time in, what, 22 years, Uh-oh. I, I legitimately feel that the Dallas Cowboys have a better front office and a brighter future yes. than the Dallas Mavericks. And that is crazy to say that. And we have Luka Doncic. I got to say this, bro. Shots. Go ahead. You just shots, man. Yeah, the shots, man. That- Jesus, they ought to be embarrassed for that, man. They ought to be embarrassed <laughs> for that. Jeez, man. You know, like what? you got Luca, and it feels like you have a team on the brink of everyone's needing icy hot, bro. Like, right. how's your team so old? 
Well, what, what, what are we like the fourth oldest team or something like that? And that's funny you said that, bro, because I remember uh, I, I think it was uh, I think Uncle Freezy was like, "Yo, we got a young team," and we were like, "Actually, we have one of the oldest teams." Like people think that we're young because you know Dodo wasn't hadn't been in the league that long, or Maxi ain't been in the league that long. Remember, these guys came into the league at like twenty five, so mm-hmm. they've been in the league like five years. 25 plus 5 is 30. You're 30 now. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, as far as as long as you've been in the league, yeah, you're young that way. But as far as your age, you're not young anymore. These guys are 30 plus now. Reggie yep. Bull was 32. Uh, Tim is 31. Like you said, Max is 30. 30. Uh, the White Power is 29. He's about to be 30. Uh, Spencer just turned 30, I think. No, he's 29. This is 29. So, yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, you know, Javel McGee, he's like 35. Uh, Kim was 34. You know what I'm saying? The team is getting older, bro. So mm-hmm. we only have three youthful guys on that team, and that's, uh, you know, uh, Josh Green, uh, Jay Hardy, and Luca. Yeah. Luca. So, like, people people have this uh, this this notion that we're young because those guys haven't been in the league that long. It's like, yeah, because those guys came into the league at like 25. So, five mm-hmm. years later, yeah, you're 30 now. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I guess how. Well, I don't have all the, the cool gadgets you got where I can put the comments up there, but uh, I'll run through some of these and then uh, we'll, we'll just kind of, uh, you know, play it by ear on how we react to them, right? Uh, so we got Lyles, I guess. Can you see the comments too? He, uh, I think I can see him. Hold on, let me put him up here. He goes, what's up, boys? Vibe checks. How we feeling? <laughs> if you've been watching this, you see how we feeling. Uh, he says, let's go. Low gang. Yes, sir. Uh, Reggie DC2, good to see you feeling better, bro. Law, yeah, nice. man. Your brother, I'm, I'm there. Hey, your, and your, <laughs> sister, and your sister said, I still gotta sleep upstairs, man. So, one more night at least. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm ah, that's the part is, but yeah. <laughs> Ed, Edward goes, This is terrible. Max is a solid player, he is in, in, in doses, right? When you rely on him like a starter, that's where it gets, uh, it gets difficult. Dirk yeah. owns LeBron, says, Let's go, baby. Uh, Lyles, that's how you feeling, bro. You touched on that. Dirk yeah, LeBron about, says, about 85%, man. We, we ready to go tomorrow, y'all. So, 2015 yeah. tomorrow. Then we're looking forward to that. Dirk owns LeBron, says he should have never been playing started minutes and now he's injured because of it. I've been saying, I totally agree. Dirk owns LeBron, yeah. I totally agree. He says, Nico, we trust. Oof, it's an oof right now. Oof right now, unless he could prove us wrong. And yeah, I, be, look, wrong, I, 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 I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm proven wrong because I don't uh, want to be you, right. You don't, yeah, you don't want I don't want to be right. I don't want to be the expert. Yeah. I don't. I just want to talk about it. But I don't want to be yeah. the expert and having to give you the, you know, what the right moves are. I don't get paid for that. Y'all get paid for that. Like, make my life easier. And let me Thank enjoy you. this team. Shit. Yeah. Edward says, Cuban needs another coaching method. Agreed. I think Cuban is a real head coach. Kid is just a puppet for Cuban. Cuban needs to just... Needs to just trust his team coach for once and let him coach his way. Kid is a champ. I I thought that going into the, the season, but these first what twenty seven games is yeah. Say it says otherwise. Calls for pause, man. Yeah. Bruce says, uh, I really wish Mark Cuban would sell the team. Dude cares more about Shark Tank than the Mavs. Man, I got so frustrated thinking about all the terrible decisions he's made since drafting Luca. Totally agree, man. I, at this yeah. point, it. Did you see the report where he wants to open a new stadium but with a casino? Yeah, I was like, you more focus on that, man, than actually putting a, a, a good product on the court, man. That's embarrassing. Bro, I, I love the fan base because it's like, how about focus on giving Lucas some help? <laughs> exactly. Like, I was like, well, like, that's what I'm talking about right there, bro. Like, yo, your focus he, is on the right thing. Like, that's, that's why I said you're taking advantage of Luca, man. It's like, you don't, you don't care, he, man. You don't care. He's tapping, in, he's tapping into that Jerry, the Jerryisms. Back then, he, he Edward uh, is uh, Dirk, and he's just going to sit here and take all this stuff, man. That's he's not, man. And I, and I know somebody was giving a uh, uh, crap to um, Big Game James about contract construction and that you know Luca is not going to turn down two hundred fifty mil to to stay with us and this and that. And if he if he gets traded, uh, ain't no team going to be able to to make those trades. I, I don't I don't really get to like get all his details. So I'm not trying to uh, say whatever he was saying and didn't have any validity to it, but. If you're training Luca, there is still ways to trade him. And if Luca wants to win, he don't have to take a max. He could just leave and walk for free and go to the team and take uh, a one year, $15 million deal to get his chip. And then he could re up. It's more ways than one. The skinny cat 
right? As they say, and Luca is one of those dudes that wants to win, bro. You know he wants to. You're you yeah. know he wants to win. He, he didn't, ain't no bones about that. Uh, Edward goes. Mark has let a a lot of average above players go in the past. Brunson is starting in New York, I think. And look at their record now. Knicks are going ham with Brunson. Yes, they are. Bruce Rivers, Reggie Bullock should have been off the team last season. His trash can water. Dang. Ooh. Not even Ooh. juice. He he trash can water. water. Straight water. Okay. <laughs> 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 Derek Owens LeBron says, Kemba, how can you help this mass team? Kemba, I can dribble. That's why I said. Didn't I Kimba, just say that? <laughs> I said, I, 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 I said, bro, we just need people that can dribble, bro. I'm not even asking for playmakers. Can you just dribble the ball? If I can get if I give you the ball, can you dribble from here to here? Right. And hand it off. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> how we ask for, man. All we're asking for. Lupi, they go, Sean and TGK support. Appreciate it. Dirk owns LeBron, says, I've been saying kid is losing this team. He's playing too many mid-games. Mind games. Too many, too many mind games. I, yeah. I, said, I, I, I said that on the show, man, and King said I need to stop saying it. And I've been saying it. But. Yeah, and and I, I agree with King in certain aspects. Like, yeah, we, you know, they just... But man, that hope is like Luke, dwindling away. Like, the little Luke, hope that Luke, I'm... Luke's body language should tell you everything. Everything. Every single thing. Uh, Bruce goes again. Uh, kid is a nice guy. We need a coach who's strictly about business. And, you know, I think at a certain point, here's the sad thing about it. Here's the sad thing about it. I think the Mavs overall franchise is, like, just really friendly, very, you know, um, player-oriented. It's, it's not ran like a business. You got your coach. I mean, your owner right there on the, on the, on the you know, uh, what is it? Front court, front seat, front row, cheering you on, and it's just like, man, just go up to the the the, the suites, bro. Just go up there, go up there and stop being the lower bowl. But you know, it's his team; he can do what he want. But still, it's just go like to, up to the skybox, the skybox. And then that's why I think a lot of people think Luca would like Miami because he probably wouldn't be allowed to just be goofy and happy go lucky all the time. He'd probably be a little more serious about winning, even though he's very serious. It's just the Mavs atmosphere. Get, like, oh, okay, we can lose today. It's okay. Oh, I cannot show up. I cannot show up against uh, the Houston Rockets and take an L. Or I cannot show up against the Detroit Pistons and lose the Detroit basketball. Like, we give that 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 vibe. Like, it's okay to do that. Um, here we go. Here we go. Bruce Rivers, kid taking Wood out versus the Suns after he scored 16 straight points. Sums up what type of coach that. And that was in the very first game. Very first, very game. first game. And it's still going on. Yep. That's the best thing to come right there. Yep. Uh, and the last comment I see here is Lyles. He says, the truth is I still feel we can salvage the season and get this back on track. We need to lock and stop those stupid shit. <laughs> Kid rotations. We need to. Yeah, uh, I think I'm reading it right. How can you bench Wood when we have Allen and Mobley eating, eating on us? It wasn't even there. It was Mitchell going off on us. So yeah, man. Uh, I appreciate you joining this, bro. Like it, it was a. Uh, no it was pretty fun, man. Yeah, I, I don't know like how you do this. I like this, man. Hey, yeah. uh, next time, man, you do it. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to send out some some flyers, folks, man. Let them know we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, it was, like I said, it, was a, it was a little test run. I was aiming for like 15, 20 minutes, but we got 40 out of it. Not bad, not bad. Oh, and, uh, what's good, man? Got some more folks from the, from the glow yard. They say, what they say? Thanks for, your, for the discussion, y'all. Yeah. You think Nico has something up his sleeve? Uh, I hope so, I man. Hope, man. I hope I so. Hope. Jesus, man. Like, look, it's, like I said, and, uh, the guys like... Uh, got my dog down here. Yeah, my, I'm, more, I'm, I'm more you're petting something, so I don't want people to think I'm just already touching something yeah. else. And I got my daughter. Right. <laughs> my, 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 my uh no, I was gonna say we have uh you know folks like Woj, and then you got um Tim McMahon, those people are saying, man, look, Dallas got like two years, man. Now, if these guys are saying stuff like this, it's not just somebody just pulling out the air, man. It, 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 they probably know something, y'all. Like yeah. th them saying this stuff, and then you see Lucas' body language over the last handful of games, bro. It is this is? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm not looking past it. I'm, I'm taking this very serious. Like if they need to find a way to get this man some help, man, it's just plain and simple. 
You got to yep. stop lag lagging. It needs to be aggressive. It's like, uh, you know, you, 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 we had this issue before we got Nico, and then we're having the issue again. It's like, you said, we're, we're promised that this whole entire new front office was going to be a whole lot more aggressive when they came mm-hmm. in and they took Daniel's spot. But we're not getting that, though. We're getting the same thing. Yep. If not worse. Agreed, bro. Uh, another comment said, who do you think is getting traded? Any thoughts since trades can officially happen? I think um, the traded. one trade that needs to happen is, uh, <laughs> I don't know, Theo Pinson and Frank Lakila for whoever can dribble. That's and another, then, That's another front office that I told King about. I said, why did you sign Theo Pinson? He's he not – what were you using him for? Nothing. Well, I, for, I don't know who's, who says this. I don't know if it's you or Bibbs that, that says this, but we're like, we got a podcast that that's on the, on the NBA roster. <laughs> oh, that was, uh, that was Bibbs. Bibbs said yeah, that yeah. Bibbs saying that they, uh, he's living the uh, NBA uh, fan's dream. He <laughs> said he gets to travel, he gets to podcast. What do you say? He said something else. I was like, that. that's exactly what Theo Pinson is. And, and, I, and I love Theo, man, but like, it, it gets to a certain point, like, bro, is is this helping us win at this point? And not, no. and then I, I mean, for me, um, to answer Bruce's uh, uh, Dirk owns LeBron comment about who's getting traded. Honestly, if we could find a way to trade Tim Hardaway Jr. and Bertans together for anyone that can protect the paint or anyone that can dribble, uh, ideally, someone that could do both because of losing Maxi, that'd be great. I would be opening. I'd be open to. Add in a second if it's someone that's like decent. I'd be open to add in the first if it's someone that's good and young that could do that. But like for you to get a trade Daniel. to get Hardaway and Bertans off your team, it is unlikely to happen. So without unless the first. without attaching a first and without attaching a green or a Hardy, I don't know how you do it. And and but th- that would be my first thing is how can I how can I get those guys off my team? Because I know we all got caught up in the hype. When uh, THJ went crazy for, for five games, and yep. then the last game, what he do? He just gave us three points in 30 minutes. Listen, shout out to the folks who uh, told me and King to apologize. Uh, we're going to need our apology uh, for y'all making <laughs> us apologize to, to THJ. We told y'all this was going to happen. This is his game. He, I, 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 ever I never game. apologized. I said good, good stuff. Yeah. That was good, good little run. But I need another two months of this. Exactly. Me I was like, bro, how often have we seen him do this? Like, he'll look good for two or three games. Oh, look at TAJ. Then all of a sudden, bam, we going right back to give me a three points here, seven points there, you know, two nope. uh, for twelve or whatever. Like we seen it before, <laughs> bro. So that's why I said I'm not. I'm not apologizing to him, man. I, he, he can do this, like you said, for like two months. And then mm-hmm. you know, apologies you want for me. Yeah, wow, start start off. taking your hands off. and packing yourself, and going over to whoever else we trade you to. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Bruce says, uh, Luca and Miami would have would be in an insane shape. I actually believe that Pat Riley doesn't play with that being out of shape. The whole team is disciplined. LeBron and Wade said they run it like the military when it comes to fitness. I can see that. And and also, um, you know who I would really like on this team? Jimmy Butler. What do, what do we got to give up to get Jimmy Butler? Oh, man. Listen, the way uh, Pat Riley is, he's a shrewd operator, bro. That dude going to ask you for 85 first rounds. <laughs> Your play cousin, your your baby toe, mm-hmm. and whatever food you uh, whatever meal you about to eat that night, you want all that, bro, for uh, Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler and Luca would be nice uh, for like a good two and a half years before Jimmy falls out of like his prime. But that'd be real nice to to have Jimmy Butler for sure. Uh, we got a few more comments, man. We'll we'll wrap it up. I don't I don't want yeah, to be out uh, here all night. Uh, did you guys read the Mavs Fan for Life article on tradable contracts? Seems like some decent. Uh, we got to be able to say goodbye to some of these guys. I agree. This, uh, again, the, the trick of all of this is going to be able to convince a team to take on these players. That's all this, it comes down to. And what are you willing to give up? And if we give up a green or a hardy, it, it better be. It, it, if, say if it's Bertans and Hardy. What do you want back for that? I can't. I don't know because I, I I know what the options are. But listen, I don't. Uh, Jeremy I don't Grant. Want to make a move if I gotta give up Hardy or Green, bro. I'm trying to do something to where I don't have to give up any of them guys. Hey, but 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 you know that that's where it's going. I know. I know. I know. Bertans and, and Hardy for Jeremy Grant. Will you do it? He covers a few things. He can dribble. He can shoot, and he can. 
Oh, you the paint a little bit. Hardy over there <laughs> in the same organization that developed Anthony Simons. You about to have another Anthony Simons over there. Oh, that, mom, that mom is like, bro. Like, uh, can I sleep on that one, man? Can I sleep on that? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just saying, like this right off the top of my head. Uh, or, yeah. no, I uh, Tim Hardaway in green for who's available? Who's who before, Tim- before, you, before you said, let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Say, Adam, who would you be least mad at if they traded him out of uh, Hardy and Green? Like, you had to take one, each of one of those guys, either one of them, and throw them in the trade. Like, would you, which one would you be least mad at? Damn. Uh, Josh Green. Yeah, I, I, I'll probably say Josh Green. Like, I would rather give Josh Green up than Hardy. Because Hardy got me curious. I want to see what he comes, he turns into. He has to pick him. It, yeah. Here's the thing with, with the NBA. I think Bradley Beal said it. You got to get buckets in this league. Yeah. And and Jaden Hardy has a, a natural way of getting those buckets, bro. And yeah. Josh Green has developed, and his bucket getting is a little – not unorthodox, but it's it feels a little um like it was made in a warehouse type of deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jaden Hardy it feels like he's been playing ball his entire life, street ball, Every any kind of basketball, he has like uh, essences of it, like from every type of of game. So when he plays, I just see like a natural at it. If, if that makes any sense, no, so, no. But I, I, I'd be I'd be less mad if it was Green, but his got to be for somebody uh, that's going to improve this team a lot, bro. Uh, a few more th- thir- three points in thirty minutes. Yep, said that was crazy. Still better than Reggie with all this zero. He's been making some threes, but it's not doesn't excuse what he's done the uh, earlier in the year. What do you guys feel about kid wasting Hardy's potential, uh, leaving the rotation to seniority? Uh, y'all, we talk Mavs have talked about that at length. Y'all get a chance to check them out on their channel, and and they they, they go over that a lot. I I, I want Hardy to develop, um, but again, we're talking about kid here. Uh, right. with a, I would trade my left. I, I guess we could fill that in for Laurie Markinen. Uh, yeah, we had a chance for Maxi Kleba, right? To get him. That's all yeah, we had to trade. We did. Max, yes, we did. Maxi Kleba for Laurie Markinen. We didn't do it. And I was told to shut up and get off the mic. <laughs> but now I feel like you would have had that trade now. Yeah. Uh, Pelicans get Tim Hardaway, 25 second round pick. Mavericks get Larry Nance and Devontae Graham. Uh, yeah, sign, sign me up. I can do that. that. Sign right me now. up. Right, right now. now. Right now. All right, man, we're going to leave it at that. I know there's another comment saying maybe we could get Clarkson and Sexton from Utah, maybe even Larry if we're willing to give up a pick. If you get those three without trading uh, Hardy and Green, I'm for it. And then uh, SJ as a second star would be nice as well, but I don't feel this would be possible. Yeah, that's impossible. I think uh, I think the Thunder needs to just uh, make their home with him. Uh, that dude's a superstar for for damn sure. You got any last comments, bro? Before we get up out of here? No, man. This was fun, man. Like I said, this is a new format. I didn't know uh, YouTube was doing. Yeah, I know you. Live, how you feel? I know yeah. shit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that, now, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the finally did it. This is a little warm up for me for tomorrow, man. Like I said, it's got over COVID and stuff, man. I still got a little bit, but I'm, I'm fine though. I can move around, I can function now. Um, like I said, finally got to eat solid food now. I said it feels like uh, I, have, I had a water burger today. That's the first meal I had after, uh, after being it, healthy, you know what I'm saying? So, right, right, right. <laughs> um, but you know, hey, I, I had fun, man. Uh, hey, I. It should be more likes than that, y'all. Hit that like button for my boy, man. He, he deserves it, man. He's a hard work on this channel, man. Great math content. So hit that like button, guys. Should be more likes than that. Appreciate that, man. Well, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Anyway, guys, appreciate y'all uh, tuning in. Appreciate you, Rel, from We Talk Mavs to jump up in here and uh, uh, grace uh, my channel uh, for the first live on this channel, man. Well, uh, we talked a lot about the Mavs. Hopefully, y'all catch it on the back end. There's a few comments. Let me see. So, we should trade everyone for LeBron. Now, LeBron will probably come to us if we could maintain a decent team. He'll probably come to us in a year or two. And then, glad you're feeling better, Rel. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, it's been your boy, TGK, here with Rel. Going to catch y'all on their channel tomorrow, but I'll catch y'all on the next one. We out. Yes, sir.